Welcome to Media Stream. My name is Charm Pennewart, and I'll be the host of Brain Health Awareness Series with Amazon bestseller, Dr. Kelly Miller. So many children are suffering from ADHD, as well as adults and adolescents. We'll be talking about ADHD, alternatives to ADHD therapy without medication. Dr. Kelly Miller joins us from Saving Your Brain Centers, training centers for the brain. Well, thanks for having me. It's the number one reason that a child will be medicated. It's really pushed by the school system and that, you know, your child needs to be medicated because, you know, they, they're acting up and it's disrupting the class. And what I want to stress is there's other ways to handle that. Some of the medications used for the treatment of ADHD can actually create cardiovascular events. And the American Heart Association suggests that these children have an EKG before starting any stimulant medication for ADHD. So it's important to understand that uh, the medications are not a magic placebo. They don't work for everybody. Lots of problems with decreased appetite or weight loss. It can also um, decrease their growth potential and velocity. And again, they have things like dry mouth, constipation, insomnia, and nervousness. Should I or shouldn't I? He gathers this information. Should I respond or should I respond? Should I say that? Should I not say that? So a lot of people with the impulsivity and we call it a filtering problem, then they, they act impulsively without, you know, as we grow, our brain regenerates and we can make new neurons and this, and our brain can change and, and they can either change positively or negatively. You know, this is a very uh, great technology, another great technology that's out there that helps strengthen that right hemisphere and helps correct those uh, discommunication, dyssynchrony in the brain and get it working better. I used to play rugby. So I call this as you put a scrum cap on your head yeah. and it's got 19 points of reference. It's measuring your brain waves. And this quantifies it so we could have some brain waves could be too much, some could be not enough. And then we also have this hemispheric balance. So sometimes we get an imbalance between the left and right side of a particular brain wave like alpha or beta, and that will create anxiousness. So based off the brain map, we now know that helps us know which part of the brain we need to strengthen or which part of the brain we need to calm down or what part of the brains we need to balance. And we can do that through something called neurofeedback, whatever the areas are weakness and the person is going to watch a movie. So as they watch the movie, it's measuring the brainwave activity. And when their brainwave activity is good, the picture is really bright. And when it's not so good, it's kind of dulled. So after a while, as they're doing this, the brain figures out, oh, if I want to see better, I'm going to operate in this frequency because our brain is built for survival. And from the brain mapping, we're able to put specific programs in this for uh, the individual to help balance their brainwave activity. So this is something they do two or three times a day for about 20 minutes. It's a great tool to help keep the brain balanced. And it's a great de-stressor. In today's world, I would say we all need a tool to de-stress our brain. Most doctors are going to prescribe a, you know, one of a half a dozen different medications right. or whatever that diagnosis is. So it's really more about finding where that deficiency is in that individual and giving them specific support for that. And when you do that, the brain balances and changes and those behaviors that we don't like go away. In most cases, the vast majority of of people who have this can be, this can be eliminated, you know, permanently right. eliminated. Yeah, it doesn't have to be chronic. It doesn't have to be lifelong. Um, I love the fact that you really dig down to the root cause of the problem and try to find where it is deficient and then try to help uh, with retraining that brain and bringing it back to balance. Um, this is such a great technology. And so how do they reach out to you and get started on a program? Normally our workup for, a, which is a two hour workup on a, a person uh, is 395 and uh, it's very thorough. It, it also includes cognitive testing, which isn't done, which is done on a computer. So that's not even part of the, the, the two hour exam and uh, very thorough then we come up with a game plan because it's going to vary um, because people have different things so this treatment is really 
and very affordable. When the average cost for a family to have an ADHD child is about $15,000 a year versus a child who doesn't have any neurological deficits. So that's pretty significant. So if you're talking about uh, having that child under your roof for 18, 20 years, we're, we're talking a small fortune there. Spending a fraction of that of money, uh, amount of money and in, in finding what's not working right and save a lot of money and also just a lot of suffering and stress for everybody. Sure. Great deal and a great offer. Thank you very much for joining us and we look forward to continuing for next month for autism and that's going to be a great topic to cover as well. So thank you very much, Dr. Miller.